Five crime scenes, four lives lost in a violent 24 hours in the metro area. If your test kit has been exposed to extreme heat or extreme cold, don't hang your hat on the result that it gives you. An incoming cold front could cause problems for people getting COVID tests delivered to their homes. One month ago today, the Marshall Fire destroyed more than 1,000 homes in Boulder County. A month later, we still have a lot of questions. 9 News at 5 starts now. A violent Saturday night has turned into a violent Sunday with five separate shootings across Denver and Aurora. Those five shootings left four people dead and four others injured with most of the, re the most recent one in Aurora this afternoon where a man was shot in the foot. Nine News reporter Angeline McCall live in Denver with the latest on the investigations, Angeline. Yeah, unfortunately, it's been a weekend of a lot of violence in both Denver as well as Aurora. We just heard within an hour that there was another shooting shooting that happened today in Aurora. A man was shot in the foot as he was walking in that area, and we know that this is just on top of some of the separate incidents that we saw earlier on in the weekend. Now let's begin in Aurora. That is where uh, police were investigating this morning after a 35 year old man was shot to death. It happened early this morning off of Dallas Street near Colfax Avenue. Aurora PD say he did not live on the street but was in the area when he was shot. One woman described hearing something at around 545, but to her it sounded more like an explosion or loud noise. It turns out those were gunshots. Also in Aurora, a 17 year old girl was shot last night at that home today. Bullet holes as well as damage. A woman there told us she had a house party at her place off of South Halifax Street in Southeast Aurora. She says a round of gunfire hit her friend in the elbow area and grazed her rib cage. She says she did not know who fired a gun and she was upset and would like police to know who did this and why. She says doctors expect her friend to be okay. And then over in Denver, a man was shot over on Danube Street last night near the Green Valley Ranch neighborhood. He was taken to a local hospital, but sadly passed away from his injuries. Two other men are believed to be somehow connected to this shooting scene as well and showed up at the hospital for non life threatening gunshot wounds. And that fourth scene off of Ogden and Colfax in Denver, police say two men were found dead there late last night. Denver police say that is now a murder investigation. Of course, last year we saw high crime rates in both Denver as well as Aurora. We did ask for updates from both uh, police agencies as to information about the suspects or victims, but they said they didn't really have any other information apart from what we shared with you guys. Steve. Very busy, very sad weekend for the metro area. Angeline McCall, thank you. The Picking County Sheriff's Office says that they believe that they found the body of a 28 year old man who has been missing for nearly a week. Hunter Hyde was reported missing January 25th after he didn't show up for work. Coworkers said Hyde didn't answer their calls. No one appeared to be at his house. The Sheriff's Office says that they found a body Saturday afternoon on a remote trail near Emma in unincorporated Picking County. They believe it is Hayes. Cause of death is under investigation. Tomorrow, the Tri-County Board of Health will hold a special meeting to decide whether to let their indoor mask mandate expire. That order is currently set to expire on Friday. Tomorrow's meeting is set for 430. They're not the only ones. Denver health leaders say that they will likely let their indoor mask mandate expire on Thursday. They say they will have a final decision early this week. It comes as fewer people are testing positive for COVID in Colorado. As of Friday, our average positivity rate was 21%. Two weeks ago, it was almost 30%. We still have a long ways to go before we get to where health experts want us to be, which is right around 5%. The COVID test kits offered by the federal government have started to arrive. The problem is some that signed up for it didn't know they were delivered. And in some cases, those kits sat out in frigid temperatures for a while. Nine News reporter Jalisa Irizarry looks into if that has any impact on the validity of the test. With a quick tap, thousands of Americans are now able to get access to something that has felt impossible to find. The tests are, are really like gold right now. Colorado Nicole Zentfeld is one of them. She signed up for an at-home COVID test kit offered by the federal government free of charge. Just having that test in my house, it's like, okay, I don't have COVID. I don't think I have COVID, but at least I know it's there. The problem is Zenfeld says the test came a day early and sat out in frigid temperatures overnight. So then, of course, I went to try to do my own research of what is the temperature, how does it affect the tests, and it just depended on what article I read. That still remains to be seen, whether that would have an effect on the sensitivity or the specificity. Nine health expert Dr. Pyle Coley says there's no exact answer for this issue, 
but a recent study shows there could be an impact on results if you bring a test in from extreme temperatures and use it immediately. We do know that if the temperature is too cold, the performance of the test means that it has reduced specificity, meaning that it can give you uh, more incorrect answers, more false positives. Now, if the temperature kit is too warm, so let's say it's been sitting at the stove or the oven and it gets too warm above that 86 degrees, it has reduced sensitivity, so it can give you more false negatives. If it's sat out for a little while, it's probably going to be okay, but make sure it warms up to room temperature for at least 24 hours before you try to use it. Pieces of advice Zentveld will take. Just hope for the best is kind of where I'm at. As she and others try and find the best results. Yeah, for sure. Jalisa Rosari, 9 News. Dr. Coley says if you're feeling symptoms, but you get a negative result from the test that was in extreme temperatures, you may want to get a backup PCR test. We certainly did not feel those cold temps in Denver today, but it's something you'll want to keep in mind if you have tests arriving later this week because big cool down is headed our way. Chris, you were talking about negative numbers in some mornings this week. Yeah, we could be in some spots talking about temperatures maybe getting as low as maybe minus five here later on this week, which is perhaps hard to believe considering how warm it was today, how warm it still is at this hour. Take a look at some of these high temperatures from your Sunday, 53 in Denver, about 10 degrees above average. Kremlin, where you've been so cold for uh, kind of really the last few weeks, got that little valley in there, a high elevation valley in Kremlin, so you're kind of susceptible to getting these really cold temperatures. Zero degrees for a high up there, but Ray, the hot spot at 61 degrees out there along the eastern plains. Now, for the most part, we're going to continue with this sunny and relatively mild weather as we get into your Monday, as we got mostly clear skies expected once again for your day tomorrow. We'll have more of that in just a second. Temperatures tonight drop back into the mid 20s. Seasonable stuff, maybe a little bit warmer than the average for those low temperatures this evening. But for your day tomorrow, this is certainly not average. Temperatures running about 10 to 15 degrees above the norm for us here in Denver. Winds will kick up a little bit into the foothills, uh, especially the northern foothills later on through the day. Forecast highs for tomorrow, some 60s, even close to 70 degrees for us in a Springfield 56 in Burlington and the mountains. 30s and 40s. Didn't mention those winds. Something to watch for as we could be talking about those gusts getting on up into the 40 to 50 mile an hour range for the central and northern foothills, just the west and north of Denver. Now, as we get later on through the week, this will be the thing to watch for some of that snow developing late on Tuesday night and then Wednesday morning in particular looks troublesome. But then as we get through the uh, again, uh, Steve, that time frame, I think between uh, Tuesday night and Wednesday, we could be really in some spots talking about the potential for three to six inches worth of snow and also the foothills a bit more than that. I'm going to have more details on that next storm system coming up in my full forecast, Steve, in about 10 minutes or so. But at this point, again, the big things to take away snow Tuesday night through Wednesday and really, really, really cold temperatures. I'm just marking down. There's going to be snow. I'll just remember that. Don't need to worry <laughs> yeah. about how much just snow <laughs> snow. All right, Chris, thanks. So at this moment, one month ago, firefighters were just starting to get the handle on flames spreading through Boulder County. Families were evacuating. Wonder were wondering what if any of their possessions survived the Marshall Fire. Two people died in that fire. It's considered the most destructive fire in our state's history. One month later, there's still a lot of questions about it and how it started. High winds and dry conditions allowed the fire to quickly spread through Superior and Louisville, destroying more than a thousand homes and businesses. An initial report suggested that downed power lines may have been to blame, but investigators walk that theory back days later. Attention then turned to property owned by 12 tribes. That's a fringe Christian sect. Police executed a search warrant, although it's unclear what they found. Video obtained by 9 News shows a shed burning on that property around the time the fire started. Now, investigators are also examining whether an underground fire in an abandoned coal mine could have sparked the Marshall Fire. Wildfire expert told 9 wants to know it's possible the wind kicked up an underground coal fire caused by near, nearby power or caused nearby power lines to arc and also sparked the flames. Fire investigators say it could be several more weeks before we know exactly what caused the Marshall Fire.